The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Lumfonchingo, the mathematics teacher. We had this assignment during the last lesson. This is the assignment here. Express the following into partial fractions. This is number one. X squared plus 2x plus 1. All that divided by x squared minus 4. Number two. 2x two cubed minus x plus 2. All that divided by x cubed minus 1. And uh, number three. x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 1, all that squared. So we have to do the correction. I just hope you did this assignment. This is the solution. The very first one. What to express into partial fraction. x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. So when we look at this, we see that when we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. So when you look at this, you see that the degree of this numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. The highest power of x here is 2, the highest power of x here is 2. So the degrees are the same. So it means that to express the partial fraction, we have to first of all divide, to have it in canonical form. So that we can actually have a fraction, we can actually have it in a way that the, the degree of the numerator should be less than that of the denominator in order to have a proper fraction. So, dividing it to have it in canonical form, we'll have this. This will be equal to 1 plus 2x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 4. But note, note that 2x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 4 is the same as the something here. This denominator, x squared minus 4, is a difference of 2 squared. So it's the same as x minus 2 times x plus 2. So this means that 2x plus 5 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 2 will be identically equal to, we introduce constants now, a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 2. At this level now, we eliminate the denominator, that is, we eliminate the fractions. So eliminating the denominator gives this. How do we do it? We multiply all through so the identity by the LCM, the least common multiple, which is x squared minus 4. So we we'll multiply this part with x squared minus 4. We're going to be left with 2x plus 5. We multiply this other term with x squared by x squared minus 4. We're left with a times x plus 2. And we do the same here. We're left with b times x minus 2. At this level now, we solve for these constants a and b, which we introduce, so that we'll come back and put it there. And by so doing, we must have decomposed into a partial fractions. So solving for a and b, when x is equal to 2, this implies that 9 is equal to 4a, if and only if a is 9 over 4. What next? When x is equal to negative 1, when x is equal to negative 2, we come here, on we'll substitute negative 2, this part of 
uh, the, the, the term in A will cancel out. We'll be left with one is equal to negative four B. If and only if B is equal to negative one quarter, we've obtained the values of A and B. We'll have to substitute it. We we'll have to put it back here to have the that partial fraction. So therefore means that this fraction we're asked to divide x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4 will be equal to 1 plus, we have, we put the value of a 9 over 4 divided by x minus 2 plus, we have negative 1 quarter divided by x plus 2. So that is that fraction we have divided into partial fractions. So that is it with number 1. This is the second one. It is the same. The degree of the numerator here is the same as that of the denominator. So it is not the proper fraction. We have to divide. Divide to put it in canonical form. We're going to have it as 2 plus 4 minus x divided by x cubed minus 1. So we'll do long division. This is what we'll have. So this means that but take note that 4 minus x divided by x squared minus 1 is identically equal to a divided by x minus 1 plus bx plus c divided by x squared plus x plus 1. So at this level, we eliminate the denominators, eliminate the fractions by multiplying all through by the LCM. If we do that, we're going to have 4 minus x is identically equal to a times x squared plus x plus 1 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. At this level now, we solve for a, b, and c, the constants a, b, and c. So, solving for a, b, and c, this is how it goes. When x is equal to 1, this implies that 3 is equal to 3a if and only if a is 1. Next, when x is equal to 0, what happens? This implies that c will be equal to negative 3 and when x is equal to negative 1, this implies that negative 2 is equal to 2b, if and only if b is equal to negative 1. So we've obtained the values of a, b, and c. So we have to substitute it to obtain the fraction like this. So it means that 2x cubed minus x plus 2 divided by x cubed minus 1 will be identically equal to 2 plus 4 minus x over x cubed minus 1, which is equal to 2 plus we put that value of a here, 1, so 2 plus 1 divided by x minus 1 minus, we have x plus 3 divided by x squared plus x plus 1. So that is it there. We have this question 3. Question 3 is the same. The degree of this numerator is the same as that of the denominator. We divide by long division to put it in canonical form as 1 plus 3x plus 1 divided by x cubed minus 3x minus 2. So this is what you have to note. Note again that this part of it, 3x plus 1 over x cubed minus 3x minus 2, this is now a proper fraction. We now decompose. So we'll have it in this form. This will be identically equal to a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1, all that squared. At this level, we have to solve for the constants a, b, and c. How do we do that? We can start by eliminating the denominator. That's how do we do it? We multiply all through this identity from here right up to here with the LCM. When we do that, we'll eliminate the denominator. And so this is what we now have. 3x plus 1 is identically equal to a times x plus 1, all that squared, plus b times x plus 2 times x minus 2, plus c times x minus 2. At this step now, we solve now for a, b, and c. And uh, by so doing, when x is equal to 2, what happens? It implies that 7 is equal to 9a, if and only if a is equal to 7 over 9. Also, when x is equal to negative 2, this implies that negative 5 is equal to 7 over 9 minus 4c, if and only if c is equal to 13 over 9. When x is equal to negative 1, this implies that negative 2 is equal to negative 3b minus 39 over 9, if and only if b is equal to negative, 9, negative 7 over 9. So we have the values of a, b, and c. 
we now have to substitute to have this fraction like this. x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 1 all that squared is identical equal to 1 plus 7 over 9 divided by x minus 2 plus, uh, minus plus negative 7 over 9 divided by x plus 1 plus 13 over 9 all that divided by x plus 1 all that squared. So that is that fraction there that we've divided into partial fractions. So our lesson proper for today is lesson 40, which is on revision of integration activities and will be on quadratics, inequalities, and polynomials. As planned for our lesson, we have objectives, recall, application exercises, and uh, an assignment. So as objectives, what we are required to know by the end of this lesson. So these the, are objectives. The first one is to consolidate and apply the concepts studied on these topics, on those topics, quadratics, inequalities, and polynomials. The next one is to solve problems on these topics. So we have this topic one, theory of quadratic functions. We have this recall. You have to recall a quadratic function is of this form. f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real, and the a is different from zero. That is a quadratic function. And this sort of a quadratic equation is such that ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. This is an equation. A quadratic equation is in that form, a general form. You also have to recall the method of solving quadratic equation, factorization, the formula methods, the completing the square, and so on. There is also the nature of roots of quadratic equations, the relation between roots and coefficients of quadratic equations. We have to recall all of this. So we get straight away with the revision questions. The very first one. What are the roots of the equation? This is the equation. x squared minus 6x plus 1 equal to 0. What are the roots of this equation? So from the various methods we have in solving quadratic equations, we can use the formula methods to get the roots of this equation. So when we're using the formula methods, the quadratic formula is this x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac or that over 2a. So from this equation, as we have it there, we obtain the values of a, b, and c, and we substitute it inside the formula. So the equation is we have x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to zero. So the value of a here is the coefficient of x squared, which is one. The value of b is the coefficient of x, which is negative six. And the value of c is the constant term. The constant term is one. So we have these values. We substitute inside the quadratic formula, which is this. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that divided by 2a. So when we substitute, we're going to have x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4, all that divided by 2, which further gives us the roots as x will be equal to 3 plus 2 root 2, or x is equal to 3 minus 2 root 2. So these are the roots of this quadratic equation. That is the, the first one. Number two, determine the nature of roots of the equation. x squared plus 4x plus 8 is equal to 0. Nature of roots, the discriminant. When we talk about nature of roots, what comes in your mind should be the discriminant. And that discriminant is, this is what we have, b squared minus 4ac. Is it greater than 0? Is it less than 0? Is it greater than or equal to 0? So. We should recall that if the discriminant is less than zero, then the root will be complex. If it is greater than or equal to zero, the root will be real. So let us find out what 
the discriminant will give us here. The, in this equation, the value of A, the equation of the uh, x squared term is 1, A is 1, B is 4, and C is 8. C is a constant term, B is the coefficient of x. So when we have, we substitute it inside this discriminant, B squared minus 4ac, we're going to have 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8, which is negative 16. The discriminant has given us a negative number. B squared minus 4ac is less than 0, implying the roots are complex roots. So that is it there with number 2. This is number 3. Given that alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic equation, x squared minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Find the quadratic equation whose roots are 1 over 1 plus alpha squared and 1 over 1 plus beta squared. We have to find the new equation with those new roots. Now, this is what we have. This is the equation. x squared minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Sum of roots alpha plus beta is equal to 1. And product of root alpha beta is equal to 2. So now, we get sum of new roots. The new roots were given were 1 over 1 plus alpha squared. So we add the sum of the new roots to be 1 over 1 plus alpha squared plus 1 over 1 plus beta squared. So some of the new roots will give us this. 2 plus beta squared plus alpha squared, all that divided by 1 plus alpha squared beta squared plus beta squared plus alpha squared. So when we substitute in the values of alpha, beta, alpha squared, beta squared, this will give us negative or half. So after sum of new roots, we get product of new roots. Product of new roots will now have this times this. So this is going to give us 1 divided by 1 plus alpha squared beta squared plus alpha plus beta squared plus alpha squared. So when we substitute in those values, we're going to have a half. So our new equation is in this form. The new equation is given in the form x squared minus sum of new root x plus product of new roots. So this is what we have. So to get the new equation, we have it like this, x squared minus the sum of new roots that we had, negative a half. So minus sum of new root x and x plus product of new roots. So simplifying it, we have it 2x squared plus x plus 1. So this is the new equation with the new roots. So that is it there. With that one, the fourth question. Find the set of values of p for which f of x being equal to x squared plus 3px plus p is greater than 0 for all real values of x. So we get this f of x is equal to this. We complete the square. When we complete the square on this f of x, this is what we're going to have. x plus 3p over 2 other squared plus p minus 9p squared over 4. Now, looking at this f of x at this level, what happened? f of x will always, the, the least value of f of x here is p minus 9p squared over 4. This is the least value. The reason is this other one, x plus 3p over 2, all that squared, no matter any value of x you put in there will always be positive because of the square. So comparing this, two terms, this term and this one, this is the least value of f of x, p minus 9p squared over 4. So f of x, the least value of f of x is this. So for f of x to be greater than 0, for all values of x, p minus 9p squared over 4 must also be greater than 0. So this means that 4p minus 9p squared is greater than 0. We factor out p. So p times 4 minus 9p is greater than 0. So the critical values are p is equal to 0 and p is equal to 4 over 9. So we get the solution set. The solution set is p is less than 4 over 9 greater than 0. p is less than 4 over 9 or greater than 0. So these are the values that make f of x to always be positive where p lies between, p will be less than 4 over 9 uh, or greater than 0. 
So that is it there. So we get to the next topic, inequalities. We have this to recall. Quadratic inequalities is an, a general form of quadratic inequalities. The general form of quadratic inequality is ax squared plus bx plus c is less than or equal to zero. That's a general form. So we also have rational inequalities. We can equally call it partial fractions. Rational inequalities, that's uh, equalities, inequalities in the form f of x over g of x is less than or equal to zero, where g of x is different from zero. We also have to recall absolute value function. The absolute value of x was the definition of the absolute value of x. Absolute value functions we have to recall. So these are the revision questions under inequalities. The very first one, find the range of values of x for which the absolute value of x all that divided by 3 minus x is equal to x divided by 3 minus x. What range of values of x is going to satisfy this inequality? First, by definition, what is the absolute value of a function, a general function f of x? Its absolute value is defined as this. f of x is equal to either, it is either equal to f of x if and only if f of x is greater than or equal to 0, or it is equal to negative f of f, if and only if f of x is less than zero. So consider this function like this, x divided by three minus x, this are f of x. So it means that x divided by three minus x will be greater than or equal to zero. Given that x is different from three, x should not be equal to three because at the point x is equal to three, this will be undefined. So, from here we get the critical values. The critical values are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. So, this therefore means that the values that, the range of values that are going to satisfy this inequality, the range of values that are going to make this left hand side to be equal to the right hand side will be these values x less than 3, x greater than or equal to 0. In between this range, any value of x when substituted here is going to satisfy this inequality. So that is it there. So the second one, find the range of values of x for which we have 2x plus 3 divided by x minus 1 is less than 1. So we are going to find the range of those values. So we have it like this. The first thing is that we subtract one from both sides of this inequality. By so doing, we have it like this. At this level, we look for the LCM. We are subtracting two fractions. This is the same as this fraction divided by one over one. We look for the LCM. So when we look for the LCM, that LCM is X minus one. So when we look for the LCM and we subtract, we're going to have two X plus three minus in bracket X minus one divided by x minus 1 is less than 0. This implies that x plus 4 divided by x minus 1 is less than 0. From here, we get the critical values. What are the critical values? The critical values are x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 1. Those are the critical values. So we get to a table of values, the sign table. So we have here is x, the so those critical values that we had, we had to put the range of values x here, here is x less than negative 4, here is x less than 1 greater than negative 4, and here is x greater than 1. So we get this x plus 4, x minus 1. So when we get uh, the range of values from this from here, x less than negative 4, we substitute in here in x plus 4, what we have there is a negative. All the values they will give us negative. So when we substitute, get from this range of values, we substitute in here in x plus 4, we're going to have positive. And from here, from x greater than 1, we put any value in here, all the values will give us positive. We come to this next one, we substitute x minus 1. We get values of x in this range, we put 
we're going to have negative here. Also in this range will give us negative and this other range, S greater than one, is going to give us positive. So we multiply. This positive times positive is positive. Positive times negative is negative. Positive times negative, uh, negative times negative is positive. What do we require? We require those range of values that are going to make that inequality less than zero. That is negative. So this is the range that get us negative. So making this range of values to be the, the correct range that satisfies the inequality. So our solution set is x less than 1 or x is greater than negative 4. This is the solution set. These are the range of values that are going to satisfy the inequality that is making that inequality negative. So we go to the next topic. The next topic there is polynomials. We have this to recall. We have to recall that a polynomial function generally is in this form. V of x is equal to a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus and so on right up to a 1 x plus a 0 where a i belongs to z and a n is not equal to 0 and the n is an element of set of natural numbers. N, n, small n belongs to a set of natural numbers, this big N. is a polynomial of degree N. So this is a polynomial of degree N. The highest power of X here is N. We also have to recall arithmetic processes on polynomials, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. We have to recall that. We also have to recall the remainder theorem, which is this. When a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus a comma then the remainder is p of a that is a remainder theorem we also have to recall the factor theorem when a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus a comma and the remainder is zero then p of a is equal to zero and uh, x minus a is a factor of p of x that is it there the remainder and factor theorems we have to recall that also if p of x is divided by x minus a then we have p of x is equal to x minus a times q of x plus r from here x minus a is the divisor q of x is the quotient and r is the remainder we also have to recall rational polynomial functions that is in other words partial fractions so we go straight away to the revision questions that's the very first one. Given that g of x is equal to x cubed plus 5x squared plus x plus 4, and uh, this other function, p of x is equal to x squared plus 6, find uh, a, g of x plus p of x, b, g of x minus p of x, c, g of x times p of x, and d, g of x divided by x plus 2. So, that is it there. For the first one, we have g of x plus p of x. So this is g of x, this is p of x. We add like terms, we add corresponding terms. So we see that x cubed here is a long term. We have x cubed, 5x squared plus 1x squared gives us 6x squared. So we now have plus this x, 4 plus 6 gives us 10. So to subtract is the same principle. We subtract corresponding terms. So we have x cubed is alone, x cubed minus 0 is x cubed. So we have 5x squared minus 1x squared gives us 4x squared. So we have x minus 0 is x, 4 minus 6 gives us negative 2. That is it there with b, c, g of x times p of x. Here, this is g of x, this is p of x here, g of x. Multiplication is commutative. So what we do here is, we take each term in this first function. We multiply by all the terms in this other function. For example, take x squared times, we have x cubed plus 5x squared plus x plus 4. And then we can take 6 with times 6 times x cubed, also times 5x squared, also times x, also times 4. So we have it here like this. So at this level, we now have to simplify. We add the like terms. So to do that, we're going to have x raised to the power 5 plus 5x raised to the power 4 plus 3 plus 7x cubed plus 34x squared 
plus 6x plus 24. So we will multiply g of x times p of x. That is what we have. And uh, also we have this one. g of x divided by x plus 2. By long division, we will divide x plus 2 by g of x. We are going to have this. We are going to have x plus 2 times, this is the quotient, x squared plus 3x minus 5. Plus, there's a remainder. We're going to have a remainder of 14. So we have this question 2. It's in two parts. First part, sub 1 and sub 2. Sub 1, factorize f of x completely, where f of x is, is identically equal to x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. Yes, we have to factorize that completely. And uh, hence, the second part, find the roots of f of x is equal to 0. So this is f of x we have here. We can use the try and error methods. We we'll use the try and error method to get factors of six, the pair of factor of six, and we put them inside f of x to see which of them will give us by applying the factor theorem that if x minus a is a factor of f of x, then f of a should give us zero. So when we do that, this try and error method, we'll see that x plus one is a factor of f of x because f of negative 1 will give us 0. So since x plus 1 is already one factor, we divide uh, f of x by x plus 1 to reduce it to a quadratic. So when we divide, we're going to have it like this. f of x will be now be equal to x plus 1 times x squared plus 5x plus 6. So this is a quadratic. We further simplify to have it as x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. So for the second part of it, we will set hence find the root of f of x from the fundamental principle of arithmetic. If a times b times c is equal to zero, therefore either a b is equal to zero, a c is equal to zero, all of them are equal to zero. So from here, we equate this is zero. It means that x plus one will be equal to zero, which means that x will be equal to negative one. From this other one, we have x will be equal to negative two, and x will be equal to negative three. So those are the roots of f of x. There's this third one, express 2 over 1 plus x times 1 plus 3x squared in partial fractions. So in partial fractions, we're going to have, this will be identically equal to a over 1 plus x plus bx plus c over 1 plus 3x squared. So we eliminate these fractions by multiplying all through by the LCM. We're going to have 2 is identically equal to a times 1 plus 3x squared plus 1 plus, we have 1 plus x times bx plus c. So when we solve for a, b, and c, we'll have a to be equal to a half, c is equal to 3 over 2, and uh, b will give us negative 3 over 2. So we're now going to have the fraction as this. 2 over 1 plus x times 1 plus 3x squared is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 plus x plus 3 times 1 minus x divided by 2 times 1 plus 3x squared. So that is what we have there. For this number, for given that q is real constant, prove that the roots alpha and beta of the quadratic equation is x minus q times x minus 2 plus x times x minus q plus x times x minus 2 is equal to 0 are real. So what do we know about real roots? We start by opening out the brackets. When we open out these brackets, we're going to have it like this. 3x squared minus 2q plus 4x plus 2q is equal to 0. For real roots, the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. So when we substitute those values, we'll see that this will always be greater than 0. q minus 1 order square will always be positive. So all of this term will always be greater than 0. Hence, the roots are real. And then we have this number 5. The roots of the equation x squared plus 3x plus 7 equal to 0 are alpha and beta. Form a quadratic equation whose roots are alpha minus beta and beta minus alpha. As we've seen, we have sum of new roots alpha beta is negative 3 product of sum of roots alpha beta is negative 3 product of roots alpha beta is 7. Sum of new roots will give us 0. Product of new roots, this is product of new roots, give us 19. So the equation x squared minus sum of new roots plus product of new roots will be x squared plus 19 is equal to 0. So as an assignment, we have express the following in partial fractions. x plus 2 divided by 1 minus 2x times 1 plus x squared 
a second one x minus one divided by x squared times x plus one. Our references were advanced level mathematics by Howard Clark and also advanced level mathematics by Ewane Roland and Lunge. Our next lesson will be basic concepts in logic. <laughs> On a terre minga, ma terre nyum, on a terre ma jang, ma terre ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, gani bana, ma terre mot, gani la kiri wa terre ndom, esa tina bia jinkido, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 